In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of the Lord, and welcome. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. This day, Monday, the 31st of January, 2022. It is Monday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time, Church Year C. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this month of January. Good morning and thanks for joining us. The Church celebrates the feast day of St. John Bosco, priest. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest St. John Bosco as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second book of Samuel, chapter 15, verses 13 to 14 and verse 30, and chapter 16, verses 5 to 13. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 3. The response to the psalm is, Arise, Lord, save me. The gospel is taken from St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. I read from the Gospel. At that time, Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had come out of the boat, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him, and crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him eagerly not to send them out of the country. Now, a great herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, Send us to the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them leave, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about two thousand, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The headsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. But he refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all men marveled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
the theme for today's meditation is always be in the presence of Jesus for your own benefit. Always be in the presence of Jesus for your own benefit. Dear friends in Christ, our meditation this morning is drawn from the gospel passage. In the gospel story, Jesus makes a visit to the land of the Gerasenes. There, a man with an unclean spirit came to meet him. He came in the presence of Jesus. This man was evil and he was feared because of his evil and because he was very powerful in terms of physical strength. Remember, he had many demons in him and that contributed to the great physical strength that he had. Although he was moving around as one person, yet he was a legion. Many devils were in him. Coming up to Jesus, coming into the presence of Jesus, he recognizes Jesus. He pays respect and allegiance to Jesus and his power. He bows in adoration and worships Jesus and begs Jesus not to torment him. Yes, power pass power. Beloved, let us go back a little while and try to understand what actually happened. This is the devil. It was he who ran into the presence of Jesus, worshipped him and begged Jesus not to torment him. Why? Because he recognized the power of God and knew that in the presence of Jesus, he was absolutely nothing. The presence of Jesus silences the all-powerful devil, the one who was feared by all, yet in the presence of Jesus, he became nothing. The power of Jesus makes the devil's power null and void. Beloved of God, let us meditate today on the presence and power of Jesus that makes the devil helpless. The presence and power of Jesus that is very beneficial to us. Do we benefit from the presence of Jesus in our midst? Do we benefit from the presence of Jesus and do we make ourselves and bring ourselves in his presence? Remember, the presence of Jesus changes situations for the better. In the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, it was at the wedding feast at Cana. Jesus was present, and when wine ran short, he brought wine. His presence changed the situation. Remember, in the Gospel of John again, chapter 11, verses 1 to 44, when Jesus was present, he brought back Lazarus to life. He had not been there, and Lazarus died. Remember the words of the sisters to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And when Jesus made his presence, he brought life. He changed the situation. Again, while the apostles were in the boat, battling for their lives, confirm Matthew chapter 14, verse 87, when Jesus was present in that boat, he calmed the storm. Beloved, the presence of Jesus changes situations for the better. Jesus cannot be present and things remain the same. Secondly, the presence of Jesus is transforming. When Jesus is present, and when you feel his presence and make yourself present in his presence, you are transformed. Look at the story of Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19. And indeed, every other sinner who made himself or herself 
present at the presence of Jesus, they were transformed. Zacchaeus became transformed. You cannot experience Jesus. You cannot be in his presence and you remain the same. His presence is transforming. Thirdly, the presence of Jesus dispels fear and brings hope. You cannot have Jesus, beloved, and you claim to be afraid. What are you afraid of? To have Jesus is to have all. So you have no enemies to fear, no witches, no wizards, nothing to fear. Jesus told the apostles, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. You cannot be in his presence and you have fear. So if we are in the presence of Jesus, that presence brings hope. That presence brings assurance. Finally, beloved, the presence of Jesus puts an end to the devil. Even the devil knows that his power comes to naught in the presence of Jesus. Like we read in today's gospel, the devil came crawling at the presence of Jesus. The devil came acknowledging the power of Jesus. What have you come to do with us? Have you come to destroy us? Please don't destroy us. Do not torment us. It is the devil begging Jesus in his presence. Dear God's good people, let us ask, is Jesus present in your life? Do you come into the presence of Jesus? And how can we make ourselves present in his presence? One, at Holy Mass. At every Holy Mass, Jesus is present. But do we feel his presence? You may go to Mass and you are so distracted, you may not feel that presence that is healing, that presence that brings anointing. In the sacraments, Jesus is present. Do you feel that presence when you receive Holy Communion? Do you feel that presence when you go to the sacrament of confession? Jesus is also present in his word. Do we read the Bible? He is also present when we have the exposition of the blessed sacrament. Do you go to spend some time in his presence? Dear God's good people, Jesus is always present. It is we who do not benefit from his presence. Who is the devil when Jesus is present? So it is surprising when you find Christians say they are afraid and that the devil is tormenting them. Oh, come on. Then it means Jesus is present, but you have not made yourself present in his presence. To conclude, look at the funny thing that happened. When the people saw all that had happened, they went to tell the story. And the people came to see and they sent Jesus away from their town. They begged him to leave. They did not want his presence. There are many times too in our lives that we have dispelled the presence of Jesus. And what an irony. It was the demoniac who had been healed who rather sought the presence of Jesus. He wanted to remain in his company. But people who claimed not to have been demon-possessed were rather asking Jesus to leave their town. Let us pray that we may always enjoy the presence of Jesus and make ourselves present in his presence. St. John Bosco, a priest from northern Italy, saw the need to do something for the many poor and abandoned boys and girls who were roaming the streets of Turin. Because of his trust and faith in God, complemented by his talents and personality, his efforts met with great support and success. He founded the Salesians and the Daughters of Mary, help of Christians to care for the youth. He died in the year 1888. Pope St. John Paul II has proclaimed him father and teacher of the youth, and indeed he is the patron saint of all the youth. Through his intercession, may we always enjoy the presence of Jesus and benefit from it. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.